Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm sorry for the technical glitch that kept you waiting there, and it's the same reason why you're not able to see me. <clears throat> My name is Linda Campani, and I'm the Spolly Family Director of the Breyer Center for Overseas Studies of Stanford University in Italy. I am most happy and honored I to have the it. opportunity to introduce the first of a series of events that we're going to stream live from Florence. When the students are on site at the program, we organize a plethora of co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Today event, today's event is a good example of one of such activities, and above all, it gives us the opportunity to reach out to our students, past and future. Indeed, I am very pleased to see quite a few of them here with us today. Thank you for joining us. I also know that some of our alumni are here, as well as a few faculty and the larger community surrounding our program. Thank you all. It gives us heart to have you here, especially at this time when Tuscany was just declared a red zone. Now, it is my great pleasure and distinct honor to introduce our guest, Michelaine Starred Chef Vito Mollica, who is the executive chef at the Ristorante Il Palagio of the Four Seasons Hotel here in Florence. Perhaps, even most importantly for our purposes, Vito is a very good friend of our program. We were first able to get his attention in 2013 thanks to our program coordinator, Fosca da Cerno, who had friends in common with him. We invited him to speak as part of the class that Professor Rob Reich was teaching on site at the program in the fall of that year, and which was devoted to food and politics. On that occasion, Vito discussed with the students how he became a chef, what his kitchen philosophy is. He taught us how to make a marvelous risotto and insisted that we never buy, let alone use, bouillon. Vito then came back to our program in 2017 as a guest of honor at one of our Smellic family dinners, which is a set of elegantly catered and generously funded dinners for the students and a special guest. On that occasion, he made the gift to our library of one of his books, Il Branch Italiano, or The Italian Branch. I'm thrilled that Vito gladly accepted yet another invitation from Stanford and Florence, and that he will conduct a master class in which he will teach us how to make a classic of Italian cuisine, but one that he proposes with a very interesting twist, penna all'arrabbiata with crispy vegetables. He will be taking questions live while he cooks, so please type your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of the webinar screen, and Fosca will relate them to Vito. Most importantly, I suggest you cook with him. And I'm now going to turn it over to Vito, who will tell us about all about what's cooking in Florence. Grazie mille, buon appetito. I will come back, hopefully, on the screen at the end of our class. Thank you all for joining. And Vito, thank you for having accepted our invitation. Grazie, grazie mille. Thank you so much, really. Such a, a big honor to be here tonight. And thank you for inviting me to cook for uh, all the students uh, who are in line for the Stanford University. It's such a really honor for me to introduce myself and also for our hotel and our restaurant to show in a virtual way our beautiful restaurant, which is part of this of, uh, Il Palagio restaurant. So the recipe that we decide tonight is very simple and uh, it's part of the Italian uh, cuisine. So we're going to have uh, a couple of uh, ingredients that I will show you, a couple of utensils that I will show you. I hope that someone, I know in some part of the, the States now is nine o'clock in the morning, but maybe in some part of the States is 12 o'clock and someone maybe can cook with me. If this happened, please let me know. I will be very happy to understand who's following the class uh, on the cooking uh, process. As well, please continue and start to do question all the time. So i am be happy to uh, answer to the question that uh, Tosca will do it to, uh, to me. Let me tell you what I have here. So just to start. First, I'm gonna have two pan and one boiling water. Then some spoon and some utensils, some uh, 
uh, non mi ricordo in inglese, <laughs> ladle. And of course, that will be only my utensils. Then let's go on ingredient. We're gonna have some vegetable, penne pasta, but this recipe can be done with any kind of pasta. Then we have some chopped tomato, some chopped fresh tomato, parmigiano, parmesan cheese, basil, some garlic, and some chili. So that will be our main ingredient. Of course, with some good extra virgin olive oil from Tuscany. Actually, now we are in a, in a season of the harvest of the olives. So we have the beautiful new olive oil, new extra virgin olive oil. So the recipe is done in two steps. We will do in a pan some tomato sauce that we call arrabbiata because it's gonna be some chili and some garlic inside. Then we're gonna cut some vegetables. We're gonna put some salt on the vegetable and then we will saute the vegetable in this pan. We're gonna cook the pasta in the water and then we're gonna toast the pasta together with the vegetable and with the uh, sauce. I will start. So. First of all, we chop the garlic. Actually, it's, it's wrong to say chop because I will slice the garlic. I never chop the garlic, otherwise the garlic will be very aggressive, very strong. And what I would like is then the garlic has a beautiful, gentle flavor. So I will slice. It's a very young garlic. And I will put in this pan. In this pan, I start to put some fire. Of course, that is not our main kitchen. It's a, let's call a camp kitchen, because I want to introduce you. I want to be inside our restaurant. As um, uh, Linda mentioned, we are in a red zone at the moment. And for us, it's a little bit sad to have our empty restaurant. So tonight, I'm with you. And you are around 150, I guess, 160. So I don't feel alone. <laughs> so I will put some extra virgin olive oil. Then I chop also the chili. The chili is really up to you how strong you like and how spicy you like. So this chili is quite, is uh, from South Italy, from Calabria region, and it's quite strong. And I will put only one. That is for four, por uh, for, uh, four portion. So as you can see, we have oil, garlic, and chili. And now I will put also some fresh basil. The basil, uh, uh, similar to other uh, fresh herbs, I never chopped. I like to break it with my fingers. So all the flavor will go in the pan. If I will chop on a, on a chopping board, you will see then that there will be some uh, green color, which is the chlorophyll of the fresh herbs. And that means then the flavor will remain on a chopping board. And I want the flavor inside the pan. So. Slowly, I will start to cook. In the meantime, I will put some salt in the water. So I will cook this one very slowly and I will start to peel the vegetable. The vegetable then I decide is gonna be uh, eggplant, pepper, then I will put onion and some asparagus. That will be the ingredient. But it's really up to the season how to do this, this uh, pasta. Uh, you can add fresh peas, you can add uh, artichokes, you can add uh, uh, zucchini, you can add uh, whatever you wish and whatever is in the seasonal in your country. So now we'll start to peel the vegetable. In the meantime, I'll watch the garlic. The garlic has to be nice and blonde. Should not be coming too brown. And the chili as well. I'm peeling quite fast. Let me go back here. As you can see, it start to cook nicely, but still the garlic needs some more second to get blonde. In the meantime, I'm cleaning the onion. Peel out the white onion. 
Okay, now I can smell, then it's time to put the tomato. So I will put the chopped tomato and I love the noise. Oh, this is the noise. And we'll get all the flavor from the garlic and from the chili and the basil. I add some salt immediately. It's always important to add salt immediately to the vegetable. As you may know, vegetable contain 90, 80 or 70% of water. Adding salt, that will allow the, the, what, the vegetable water to come out immediately and bring the pulp of the tomato to the right consistent very fast. If there is something then uh, I do not explain properly in my English, please let me know. I will stop and I will repeat. Yes, of course, you can start the question. Okay, first of all, thank you. And we can hear you perfectly and your English is as always uh, wonderful. It's nice with me. And I'm just, I'm just sad that I'm not there to smell everything. So we have a couple of questions already. We have a question about the basil. You mentioned that the uh, peperoncino is from Calabria, but we're, we are being asked where the basil is from. Actually, one of the main region for the basil, also in the winter, is always Liguria. Mm -hmm. uh, Liguria is the region where it's producing the pesto, and they have the winter garden all over the year where they're producing the basil with the very small leaves. As you see, maybe you will not see properly, but uh, the leaves are very small, and very skinny. So that means then they are delicate to the flavor. Okay, and I have another question about the size of the tomatoes for the dicing. I don't know if you can, somebody's wondering how small they are when you dice them, how the size, if you could. Okay, the size of the tomato, sorry, I cut it already before, is like this. And then That is the sides. And uh, if I put the asparagus next to it, you will see the proportion. But again, that is my side of tomato. I really invite all the time uh, my, my friends, my colleague, my guest. And when they're cooking, it's something really personal. They, do, they should follow the chef, but not replicate the recipe. You should put some of your intuition so if you like a little bit bigger the tomato, if you like more spicy, if you like extra garlic, please make sure that you make a personalized arrabbiata. I need to add some hot water and I'm using the water from the, from the pasta. And this I will cook now for uh, 10, 15 minutes. And I will keep this consistent. Look at the tomato. It's important, my tomato now is, uh, beautiful and red. If your tomato has, has not so much uh, vegetable water, add extra hot water. That's no problem. After they will reduce and they will get a proper consistency. So I will add a little bit more water again. And now it's time to cut the vegetable. Fosca, if you have some other question, please let me know. I do, we have a lot of questions coming in. So I'll ask first the technical ones and then there's a more personal one. So somebody's asking, and please put your answer, your questions in the Q&A, because um, that's the easiest way for us to check them out. So somebody's asking, when tomatoes are not in season, what type of canned tomatoes oh, yes. do you recommend, you, Chef? I'm asking uh, Rosario, my colleague, to take one of the Monticella tomato. And uh, there is some brand of tomato pelati. We, we call the pil uh, tomato pelati is the peeled tomato that we buy in a gen. And I'm using a special one, which is from uh, Puglia, and they are biologic, organic, and they are amazing. They are really good to eat uh, after the can, just with salt, pepper, and olive oil. Uh, and I can... Uh, grazie. And I can... Uh, spelling for you, that is Pomodori Pelati, Paolo Petrilli, that is the brand, called also Motticella. And I'm sure 
if you after you want a question, just of right to Fosca, of right to me, of right, whatever, we will give you the contact in the States because I know there are a couple of suppliers which they are importing this tomato. I will leave it here. Okay, Vito, I have another, um, a couple of questions, more technical questions. There are a lot of people cooking with us live right now. So even if it's 9 a.m. in California, people are cooking. So I have a question about um, substituting. Sorry, Fosca, did I understood correct? There is people in California which are cooking now at nine o'clock? It's, well, I know that, it's, see, I don't know where they are, but they're cooking. So, oh, fantastic, um, fantastic. So I have a question about whether you can substitute the chilies with jalapeno. That's one question. <laughs> Of course, of course. Okay, and another question is about substitutions. Um, if somebody can't, if somebody doesn't eat eggplant or they don't have it, whatever, can they just double or triple the quantities of other vegetables, etc.? So what they can do, many people don't love peppers. You don't add the peppers. Many people don't love eggplant. Just look at the market, what is available. If you see spinach, get spinach. Uh, courgette or zucchini, uh, they're fine. Artichokes, they're fantastic. So again, go to the market and look what is available. Also, pumpkin is nice, just if you cut in cubes. Are we doing a narrabbiata sauce with the vegetable? And again, the vegetable, the, beautiful, the beauty of the vegetable is that in 12 months, there is, many, there is a, a good variety. You can even add the mushroom. I know that in California, there is an amazing mushroom. And uh, now, for example, in Italy, is ending almost the season of the porcini uh, sap mushroom. But there is available uh, uh, chanterelle, finferly, uh, morels. So all these vegetables can be substituted, can be added to the sauce. Fresh peas as well, fava beans. We have two more questions about the peppers and the tomatoes. And I also have a lot of confirmations that people are making pasta for breakfast in California. Fantastic. So a question is, are the tomatoes that you're using, are they peeled or they, do they have the skin on them? So this tomato had the skin because they are beautiful and fresh and ripe. But really, also because when we skin off the tomato from the freshness, we remove a lot of flavor, a lot of color. And uh, I like, to be honest, I prefer a little bit to have some little skin, especially for home cooking. In a restaurant, I peel the tomato because it's important also the visual part. But if I prefer as a flavor, I prefer to keep the skin. Okay. And I also have another question about the peppers. Um, because in California, there are many different types. And somebody is asking, did you use the long red ones for this recipe? Do you have a, a what, which kind of chili pepper did you use? Oh, that is the chili pepper that we use. It's okay. this type one as I say, is from Calabria. Calabria is the region in Italy where there is the best pepperoncino. And uh, it's beautiful and nice. It's not too aggressive. It's not, uh, uh, now I tell you my philosophy according to the spicy. Especially in Italy, if we compare the Italian cuisine and Mexican or Italian cuisine and Thai, uh, in Italy, chili is always to bring up the level of the flavor but not to be the top flavor. So even inside the arrabbiata, we have to make sure that all the vegetable has their own part on the flavor. So not everything has to have a beautiful balance, a good harmony together, even the pepperoncino. But again, if you like more stronger, you can add whatever chili you like and the amount that you enjoy. Okay, I'm, I'm going to move away from the food because I have a feeling we're going to go back to that very quickly. But somebody wants to know what kind of music gets you in the zone while cooking? Oh, my God. Why? I love this question. Special uh, event. I always take some, of, some guy of my team and they, I don't know if they are, are too nice with me, but I always listen... Uh, few uh, players. Leonard Cohen is one of my favorite in Absolutely. Nina Simone, I love Nina Simone. Pink Floyd, I, I really go crazy for Tolkien Aids. 
of course, nothing is contemporary, but they're from uh, many years. But these are the four that I really like. And then there is an Italian singer, very famous, and maybe some of you will know, it's called uh, Paolo Conte, and it's fantastic. I, I really suggest you to uh, listen uh, via via uh, con me. That's amazing. Maybe, Fosca, you can spell in the Paolo Conte. I'll, I'll put it in the chat. I have um, a couple of more food-related food questions. Um, one is a question about, did the chili go in whole with the sliced garlic to saute? Say again, sorry, if the chili did, goes... Did, did you put the chili in intero, the whole chili, or did you break it no, up? Oh, I chopped the chili, okay. and I also put the seeds, because, of course, the seeds has the, the, the major uh, part of the spicy. Perfect. I have another question, too, about the extra virgin olive oil. Um, what kind of olive oil you saute with? Because uh, 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 one of our participants says that it seems a bit wasteful to use extra virgin olive oil, um, which shouldn't be exposed to high heat. So what, what do you use? I am a little bit disagree on that. Okay. What is my suggestion? Always use a proper extra virgin olive oil. It's more expensive, I know. But what is important is the amount that we're going to use. It's better to use one spoon less, but having a proper organic ingredient. When are we cooking? This means then we have to eat, of course. And one of our best uh, health we get from the food. So it's better to select the main ingredient good and using it in a proper way. Instead of to use ingredient where the industrialization are producing the amount and the chemical is inside the production. So I prefer a nature and again, we have to live and eat well. That is my motto. Okay, I have one last um, request. If you could show or repeat the brand of the bottled peeled tomatoes. Sorry, thanks. Uh, if you can spell, mm -hmm. it's called the uh, if you can put on the chat, Paolo Petrilli. And the, the tomato brand is called the Motticella. Okay. Wonderful. This, this olive oil is from uh, Jackie. It's a Toscan olive oil. So in the recipe, I wrote cutting julienne. Julienne means chop it fine. But again, the way how you like to chop the vegetable is really up to you. I try to cut always ingredient which they will look nice inside the final presentation. But of course, the taste is the same if it's cut uh, diced or if it's cut uh, in a julienne. I will add one more asparagus. I have another question that just came in and you just let me know if, if um, I'm bothering you with all these questions, but we have so many great questions. Um, so someone wants to know what wine or wines do you like drinking with this particular pasta that you're making? Let me tell you first, and I love all this question and make me company because otherwise it will be slow everything, and I don't like to be in silence. So I keep invited to do question. So the wine that I like, hey, well, with the vegetable, you know, I like, I like a, a good sparkling wine all the time, from Italian Spumante or a French Champagne. But in this case, I like also some uh, Chianti from uh, Toscany, which is a good, uh, I, 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 maybe it's one of the most famous wine uh, than we have in Italy, but a good Chianti, maybe a good Reserva, is fantastic as well. Wonderful. I also have another question about, can, can dried basil be used as a substitute for fresh basil if we don't have it right now? And if so, how much dried basil would you use? I want to tell you then, I don't really like dry herbs. I like fresh herbs. I like dry spice, but dry herbs like uh, sage, like uh, basil, honestly not. 
if you have dry uh, laurel, uh, come si dice loro? Bay leaves. Bay leaves. Bay leaves. If you have bay leaves, that's fine. Otherwise, don't add mm, because it, it has no taste. It, uh, actually, not has no taste. It completely changed the flavor. If you have some oregano dry, maybe you can add a little, little pinch of it, but not too much. Uh, we, are, we are having all fresh vegetable. We have fresh tomato. And as, as, as possible, let's keep it all fresh. Perfect. Um, so the eggplant, I will peel it. As you see, it's very simple, and I'm having a very simple pillar. I'm a skin off the eggplant because when the eggplant is cooking, the skin has a not a beautiful consistency. It's getting a beautiful black color, but the consistent is not nice. So I prefer to remove it. Vito, let us know if we're slowing you down with all these questions because I do have a couple of more that have just come in. Please continue, Fosca. Okay, so um, somebody wants to know what, what is the pan temperature um, do you have that you have the garlic and tomatoes on? How high is it? So the, the tomato is very slow because I give a, a big power at the beginning and then a little bit slow. And then I, I try to moderate it because I still have to cook the pasta. When I'm cooking the pasta and I come here, I continue to cook. The vegetable I put after a very high speed power because I want to roast them. So I, I'm not able to, to, to tell you the temperature in uh, Celsius. Uh, in Fahrenheit, sorry, I can tell you in uh, Celsius, which is 200, 220, the power of the, of the pan. So the eggplant I will cut in dice. So now, if um, all the vegetable are here, and what is important is then before I cook, I add some salt. These are the vegetable, and I add some salt. And I leave it for a few minutes like this. Vito, we have a question, another personal question. So we'll move away for a second from oil temperature, et cetera. So your, people want to know a little more about you and your career. Yes. And where you're from in Italia. Ah, grazie. I love this question. <laughs> Actually, if you have more questions personal like this, I really enjoy. So I'm originally from the south of Italy, a region called the Basilicata. It's a small region between uh, Campania, Puglia, and Calabria. And uh, actually, it's very famous because Francis Ford Coppola families is coming from that region. So it's a very countryside uh, and beautiful region. But I moved to Lombardia with my family when I was a young boy of six years old. So I get both culture from the north and from the south. Italy is a very small country. But believe me, the culture from the north is completely different from the south and vice versa. Okay, so I put a... I have another, another personal question about what, what your favorite dish is to cook. And I also have somebody saying that their family is from Brianza Basilicata. So. Grande, I'm from Avigliano. So the, 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 the place, the, the city where I'm from is called Avigliano, which is not too far from Brianza. So what I like to cook, actually, let me remove a little bit this. So I love to eat. I really like food. I really enjoy to eat. And as a chef, I really like simple food. We have a Michelin star restaurant here, but we start from the, from the, the recipe, are starting always from something then 
has an history behind, a story tells behind. And usually in Italy, the story tells are coming from the tradition. So I'm very fascinated by cooking something which is from uh, families, like from uh, roasted chicken to the spaghetti tomato, to the rabbiata. That is something that I cook at home. It's the best way to let my children, which are teenagers now, enjoy vegetable. Otherwise, they think the vegetables are tasteless. But if you give a flavor, they will really enjoy. So I like uh, meat, I like fish, I like uh, raw. I, I really like everything, honestly. So I start the vegetable. I put olive oil again. As you see, not too much olive oil. And it's becoming very strong. And now I add the vegetable. As you see, this is the quantity for four people, more or less. And I have the pasta. This pasta will cook like in 10 minutes. And I will add the pasta inside the water. If you have more questions. Vivka, we have so many questions today. Really? Uh, yeah. So um, besides Italian, what other cuisines do you enjoy? Allora, I love Middle Eastern food. I like Lebanese and Syrian food. I really like uh, Japanese food. I really enjoy Asian food in general. And of course, I like uh, French cuisine because I think uh, the French cuisine is the base of all what we learn in Italy. As you imagine, Michelin star restaurant in Italy until uh, 20, 30 years ago, there were really mm, not so many. But many of us as a chef, we have been trained in France uh, or in England uh, in a French restaurant. And then we come back with the technique. So and we put the technique in our Italian cuisine. So that's why French cuisine for me is so important because bring the level of our cuisine very, very higher. Then of course, I love uh, uh, the food that you have in, uh, in the States, like in London, the breakfast. I, I mean, in general, I'm very curious as a chef. I really enjoy uh, almost all the uh, country uh, food, all the food from the, all the countries. Then we have an interesting question about um, what things are like at hotels like the Four Seasons during this time of pandemic. Sorry, I didn't get the question. Just a second, I need, I need to remove the yeah. vegetable. Mi metti un timer 8 minuti così so la pasta? Because it's sono... I need to add a timer for the pasta because if I have a question, then maybe I forgot the pasta. So can you repeat the question? Yeah, the question is during this time of pandemic, how are hotels like the Four Seasons doing? I mean, how are things at the okay. hotel? So now we are in red zone. In red zone, we are still open compared to what we had as a lockdown in March and April, which we were closed. But unfortunately, be open doesn't mean that we have so many guests. Uh, now, for example, we have from uh, five to 12 rooms, and we are very happy when we have 12 rooms. So can you imagine the situation is completely changed in um, less than 10 days. We used to have always around 20, 25 rooms occupied. We were open all day, then only for lunch. And now we are open only for guests in house. So external guests that cannot come in hotel. We, as a many restaurant in the world, we had the, the delivery. So we are doing our brunch on Sunday, which as, uh, as Linda mentioned at the beginning, our brunch was very famous and uh, many guests is getting the brunch at home. But in general, we try really to keep ourselves psychologically open and ready for what will happen in the future. In the future, which is maybe in a, in a few months or in extra months, we need to be ready because the, I'm sure, and we are all sure, then the guests will go back to travel again and they want the best service and they want the best food and we need to be ready to welcome them. Okay, <clears throat> we also um, have a request. If occasionally you could show 
the pans that show how, how things are going, um, how the sorry, rest of I have some noise here. I'm sorry. If and I cannot could, hear you. Now I will do the... Exactly. If you could show okay. to the camera what's in the pans. How, how things oh, yes. Are going. Of course. Thank you. These are the vegetables. I keep them crunchy, so don't overcook the vegetable. Nice and crunchy. Here we have the tomato sauce. As you see, it's a little bit dry. What I will do after, I will add again water from the pasta. Okay. So I, I can still have question if you have a Oh yeah, we have a, a lot more questions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible. Um, somebody asks, "What is your favorite restaurant in Florence besides your own?" Of course. <laughs> well, uh, I have a very nice trattoria, which is called the Barrino, and is in Via Gioberti. I don't know if you want to spelling that. And then, of course, there is many good restaurants. For the fish, one of my favorite is For d'Aqua and Angolo del Mare. And then, uh, of course, I like a lot the Cibreo, which is a very historical restaurant as well. And then now in Florence, since the last eight years, we have a quality of the pizza, which is amazing, amazing quality. And we have uh, Follie di Romualdo, as a good pizzeria, Vecchio il Mare, Sant'Arpia, and then uh, there is uh, some, uh, some other one, which now, uh, and, and there is Giotto, also Giotto. So there is good, simple food all over to, to Florence. Okay, I have another question about when did you first start cooking? Oh, I started my culinary institute when I was 14. And, uh, but I was already a good helper, which is in, in, in our job, you say, comi, the cuisine, as a good helper when, with my mom because I'm a, I was the youngest of the family, and uh, we were four brothers, and I was the youngest one. So uh, I always helped my mom to do everything. So I was a perfect housekeeper, but also a good uh, helper in the kitchen for my mom. And then I started when I was 14, and I started, of course, with the Culinary Institute. And then from that moment, from when I was 17, I started to travel a lot all over the country. And uh, that is the best part of our job is be uh, always ready to travel and uh, get new experience and meet new people. Wonderful. I have um, a question that, that I, I think is a, a good one, which is, are your friends and family intimidated or afraid to cook for you? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. But I always say to my wife, tell them that we are happy also to have a good cheese and good charcuterie. But someone is really afraid and I feel uncomfortable on that. And sometimes I cook at home and I bring it to them. So that is also a good solution. I also have um, two, two uh, questions related to the recipe directly. One is, if you were making this uh, at home, so in Basilicata or in the south of Italy, would you add more spice? No, no, no. That is the spice that I like. And I, I just taste it and it's exactly what I like. The good level... But there, what is the, the main part is the tomato. And I love the tomato with a little spice. You know, that is what my mind needs to have it. The tomato in the middle, and then a little spice around with the fresh basil and the garlic. And would you, would you do anything differently if you were making this dish in the South? In the South, depending on what, you know, usually the season tell you what you can do different. As I mentioned before, follow the season, follow the market, follow your inspiration while you are in front of the ingredient. Just do that, and that will be different than I will do as well. And then we have a question about the pasta you're using. What kind of penne pasta should people use? Should they use fresh, dried? What, what that's, brand? That's a fantastic question, also because often, and uh, there is a very high quality of pasta, but also very bad quality of pasta. And uh, I don't suggest to be in the middle. 
I just suggest go to the high quality because the cost of the high quality is not fashion, it's not fashionable. It's because there is a reason behind. And the reason of the pasta is because there is a best grain, so the main ingredient has a good selection and is not an industrial. The majority of the Italian artisanal pasta, the grain is from Italy. And allowed me to tell you that we have a very challenged country to produce grain. And when you have a challenge, the quality is getting better. So then is the production. As you know, there is only two ingredients in this pasta. There's water and grain, that's all. But the machinery are very important. And uh, there is some good uh, factory which are producing with the bronze machinery. That make the pasta more uh, ruvida, more, uh, more dry, beautiful, and, and um, not so yellow. Not so yellow. And the bronze is more slow to produce. Many other uh, factory using the Teflon, and that is much faster. Then there is another process, is the way how it's getting dry. To cook an industrial pasta, it takes two hours to dry. To cook a proper artisan pasta goes from six to 12 hours. So can you imagine the same process is getting two days process. And as well, at the end of the day, this pasta in Italy cost three euro. Three euro, we eat five people. The industrial pasta will cost one euro and we eat five people. So in the States probably will cost five euro. So I think honestly, go to the artigianale. That is the way I always call it. And this pasta is Cavaliere, Benedetto Cavaliere. I know that in New York, you will, but also in Los Angeles, you can easily find at Italy shop. So I think the pasta is beautiful al dente. So it's time to go to the next step. So I put the pasta inside the arrabbiata. I toss it. You see how it's beautiful red color. And then I add a little bit of vegetable inside. And I leave it a few minutes. I add some black pepper. Also the pepper, I like to put at the last moment. I always ground pepper, never powder. The pepper, when it's grounded, goes to the flavor immediately. When it's grounded, goes directly to the stomach. Okay, the pasta is ready. I want to try because after I have all the friends around here, then we want to try. Add a bit of salt. And now I'm ready to plate it. It's nice and spicy. Anyone uh, have some question before I, I'm plating up the pasta? Yeah, Vito, we have a lot of questions. I know we don't have that much time. So I, I, there is a question though. Somebody is a little concerned that their sauce doesn't look so saucy and wants to add water, but is worried that it'll be too diluted. So if you have any. Um, add some water to the consistence of a good tomato sauce. Don't worry about it. Put some, wa some water on it. Okay, perfect. And then someone else wanted to know what temperature you sauteed the vegetables at. Was it a, what, what was the flame? So the, this pan was very hot. It was around uh, 200, 220 uh, uh, Celsius. So I don't know really in, uh, in um, Fahrenheit. But just make it like if it's a grill, like if you have to cook a steak. That is good eating for the vegetable. Okay, I'm gonna let you finish plating and then at about- Then we do more question, okay? So let me finish. I always like to add a little bit of olive oil, raw at the end. And then I put the pasta. 
ready here. I'm putting some vegetable on the top. And then some fresh basil. some Parmesan cheese. And it's time to have a good pasta. So if someone cook and can take a picture and maybe I can see the picture, that will be a, a present for me as well, which I will share with my colleague tomorrow. And that will be nice. So, Fosca, please, if you have questions, just I can answer. Uh, well, we're getting very close to, to closing. So I'm going to pass uh, this back to Professor Campani, and um, we'll find a way to answer all of the questions we received somehow um, at another time. I think you, you might have to do this again. Oh, that would be fantastic, you know. Also, if some of the students is, uh, is uh, interested to write you and tell uh, what they wish to do from Italian cuisine. You know, from here until uh, March, we can do maybe two more, uh, two, three, four classes again. So I will be very happy if this will happen. We would very much like that, Vito. Thank you so, so very much. This was absolutely wonderful. I want to thank uh, Fosca, who did a great job, a marvelous job. Uh, Alessio Giovanni, who've been assisting us. This was a team effort. We want to thank your assistants, Vito, Martina Nesti, Patrizia Borgarelli. And we also want to thank Adrian Doyle from the home campus and all of the attendees. Now, if we were able to be there with you, we would not only taste your marvelous pasta, but we would also gift you and your staff with Stanford memorabilia, which we hope to be able to give you as soon as the red zone is lifted. Um, this was absolutely wonderful. And uh, um, I think we will end here. We begin with a few minutes of delay, but this was super, Vito. This, uh, this was informative, warm, it was fun. You taught us all kinds of interesting things and tricks of Italian cuisine. You stay faithful to your philosophy of the quality of the ingredients and uh, uh, which you say do, uh, do a lot to, to whatever uh, you're cooking. I know that somebody is celebrating their birthday today, Marty, Marty Byers. So happy birthday, buon compleanno. Buon you compleanno. You celebrated with a penne alla rabbiata with vegetables. Thank you all very much for joining us and thank you Vito again very grazie, much. Linda, grazie, grazie tante. Postale. Grazie tante. Thank you. Ciao, grazie. Ciao, ciao Vito. Grazie.